So firstly, as, as uh, the, the, uh, the title of this panel suggests, we're covering the political and economic update of both Australia and Indonesia. But um, I'd like to stress that obviously, and as you would all know, politics and economics don't work in isolation in either country. Both are uh, inextricably linked and basically I'm going to be asking these panellists to draw on both issues um, and how they relate to one another as well as how they relate to Australia and Indonesia. But firstly, I guess I'd like to open the discussion by drawing our attention to uh, the recent visit by uh, Australia's uh, relatively new Prime Minister Tony Abbott to Indonesia. As uh, most of you know, Tony Abbott um, in, in the election campaign uh, pledged to make Indonesia his first overseas visit as um, Prime Minister, which I guess underscores the importance that this new government places on the Australia Indonesia relationship and we saw that visit happen in a matter of weeks since um, the Prime Minister took office. Firstly, I'd like to just ask the panel to reflect on Tony Abbott's visit because there's been, there was a lot of media coverage in Australia. Every political journalist um, in Australia's media outlets went uh, with Mr Abbott on his visit as well as a contingent of around 20 of Australia's top um, business leaders. Um, so it was covered a lot in Australia but Hasia, uh, we were talking earlier, I understand it barely rated a mention in Indonesia's mainstream media. Um, that is, do I need to press anything? Or? No, Sorry. no. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes, that is correct. Uh, once uh, after the meeting with Tony Abbott, uh, we don't see, I don't see many uh, media, many media coverage on that, on that meeting. Uh, and and the, even now, a lot of the sentiment is still about his comments about the asylum seekers. Uh, about these both people coming from Indonesia. So I guess on that side, uh, that concern has not been fully addressed, mm. at least for now. So it seems like the asylum seeker issue, uh, many Australians would be aware of because it's been covered heavily in the Australian media, but it, it's, it's not even mentioned in Indonesian media. Is that, is that right? The, the asylum issue is, the asylum seekers issue mentioned in the media, right? And the public were not too happy about it. Right, the public were not too happy about it, but then uh, we were we were hoping that after the after the meeting with Tony Abbott in Indonesia, uh, this issue will be uh, addressed and uh, perhaps softened his 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 stand on that. Uh, but that that expectation uh, did not come mm. after the meeting because uh, uh, I don't see many media coverage right. talking about that. Well, perhaps because the meeting does not touch about it, right? But I think this is one of the area that uh, perhaps we would like to see more uh, whether it is when it is being addressed. David McRae, does this surprise you? Uh, as I mentioned, there was blanket coverage from the Australian point of view, but as Harsia mentions, uh, there was very little coverage in Indonesia. Why is that? Why? Why? Do uh, Australian media at least place a lot of emphasis on the relationship, yet Indonesia's media really t doesn't care? Um, I wouldn't go as far as saying uh, they don't care. Um, I'd certainly agree uh, over, a, we now have had an annual leaders meeting uh, for a number of years and the coverage is always greater in Australia than in Indonesia. You could put that more broadly on Australia-Indonesia relations when you look at what's written about the relationship, a lot more written in Australia, written in English then when you go looking for stuff written in Indonesia, you'll see uh, books, for instance, on Indonesia's foreign policy that don't contain uh, a chapter on the Australia-Indonesia relationship. And I guess in part that might reflect uh, sort of Indonesia with the size of its population really conceives of itself as a, a country with regional and even global ambitions uh, that uh, it's not in a position to achieve just at the moment, but that certainly it's its outlook and uh, uh, that probably reduces the emphasis. Um, if I go to the asylum seeker issue, certainly uh, I think Australians need to appreciate that uh, that's an issue that in Indonesia political leaders don't like to comment on. They rarely comment on it of their own volition. Uh, they normally comment in response to something that Australian political leaders say or do or when there's a, say, a large-scale boat sinking. Um, 
I think uh, certainly with the coalition, with its turning around boats policy, that had triggered a period of sustained negative coverage in the Indonesian press uh, of Australia of that policy. And so it had a prominence it didn't have previously. Um, I perhaps differ a little bit from Hasia on, on the coverage after that, because in the day after the meeting between uh, the Prime Minister and the President, you saw quite a shift in tone. Uh, because the issue had been deferred in the meeting, uh, to ministerial level, you had very straightforward uh, coverage in the press saying Australia and Indonesia will cooperate on people smuggling, where a week earlier you'd say had Kompas, uh, Indonesia's largest newspaper, running an editorial headline, Indonesia rejects Australia's stance. Uh, that doesn't mean that, in, that Indonesia has come around to the idea of turning around boats. In fact, I think uh, by deferring the issue, what it's done has given the coalition government a chance to quietly drop that policy now. Uh, it was a policy that Indonesia clearly objected to even when the coalition was still in opposition. And I think that, op that objection to that policy became no less clear when they appeared to want to push ahead with it in their first days in, in government. Uh, Melissa, you were covering the election campaign every day uh, as well as Tony Abbott's visit uh, to Indonesia each day as well as his uh, visits to uh, the APEC summit in Bali and Brunei on a daily basis. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that you've, you've been across it um, from day dot pretty much. Um, on the issue of asylum seekers and, uh, and on this current government's stance on it, how has that played out in um, Australian media and how has that um, been uh, received in Indonesia? Look, it's certainly what we saw with Tony Abbott's visit uh, and meeting with SBY, it really was a repositioning of Australia's asylum seeker policy. What we had from Tony Abbott before that meeting, and as Tony Abbott as opposition leader, is very different from what we had from Tony Abbott Prime Minister post that meeting. And uh, it's partly the scaling back of the emphasis on it, as uh, Davis has talked about in terms of uh, having a, a deferral to a ministerial level. Uh, it means Tony Abbott can avoid having to raise questions at the highest level and those policy discussions which clearly they're not going to agree on. So that was a way of uh, bringing down the temperature there, for, uh, which is quite different before and after one meeting. But we also saw that uh, uh, the coalition tried to certainly paint that as a win by saying that uh, having ministerial level discussions between just Australia and Indonesia was the sort of bilateral cooperation that they had been seeking that had been uh, dismissed at a foreign affairs level by Indonesia saying no, things had to remain at multilateral discussion level. So this was uh, certainly part of the coalition trying to reframe the whole asylum seeker issue in their transition from opposition to government. They want to talk less about it, which I'll probably go on at length about, of, uh, of how significantly different the coalition's approach is in terms of how much they want to discuss it, how much detail they want to go into and reveal, and how that has changed. Um, so certainly, for an Australian audience and for an Australian media, for which the asylum seeker issue had been an incredibly central part of an election campaign that had just been won, of course there is going to be um, widespread and in-depth analysis of the very limited words we got from both leaders out of that meeting. And I think that also is an element when we look at the difference between the amount of coverage it got between Australia and Indonesia, as well as those historical differences and perhaps geopolitical differences that mean it's a bit more of a crucial meeting for Australia than it is for Indonesia. And on that point, uh, I would also note that just as much as uh, it might be somewhat unremarkable for uh, when an Australian Prime Minister visits in Jakarta, um, it, it happens the next way down the scale as well. New Zealand were extraordinarily excited that John Key was the first Prime Minister to visit the new Australian Prime Minister in Australia, whereas that would believe most Australians scratching their heads saying, well, big deal. Does it, does it really matter who was here first? It was John Key. Most people wouldn't know that. But that was very significant for New Zealand to be able to say they were the first head of state visit in Australia for Tony Abbott. So there's a bit of a, a pecking order to, to that element as well. Deb Nath, you uh, were following Tony Abbott's visit to Indonesia quite closely. In fact, you wrote an article for the Jakarta Globe on the day of um, the Prime Minister's visit, and you were also present at the business leaders' lunch that he held. 
Um, what's your reaction to the Prime Minister's visit to Indonesia? Was it well received? What was it effective? Um, from a business perspective, without doubt, it was well received because unlike people, uh, unlike consumers at large, the business community was impressed with the fact that he led a very large delegation, very powerful people in Australian business to Indonesia for the first time. And just the significance of that effort, of that gesture was appreciated by the business leaders who were there from the Indonesian community. But from a wider perspective, I have to say what a difference a few words can make. Now, we've been through children overboard at one election. We've been through turn back the boats. And when he was there, the language changed to turn back the boats when it is safe to do so. Now, in diplo speak, in diplomatic speak, that's a good turn of phrase. But it is significant. It is significant. Because when you use common sense, when you go past the campaign rhetoric, when you go past the elections, and common sense dawns, you realize that this is not an issue that any one country can handle on its own. There is only one way to, to fix this. That, that is when the neighbors get together and decide collectively on a plan. Otherwise, there is going to be brick batting forever, and it will continue to have a negative impact on business. So does this issue of asylum seekers and refugees who um, use Indonesia as a transit country to, to try to come to Australia, um, does this issue threaten relations between Indonesia and Australia? It's an open question to, to any one of you. Um, I think it becomes a point of tension, again, when there are policies from Australia uh, that can be interpreted within Indonesia as uh, Australia attempting to impose its will on Indonesia. Uh, outside of that, the issue is just that people smuggling and asylum seekers are a non-issue domestically uh, in Indonesia. Uh, things like beef prices, uh, the price of soybeans are politically salient in a way that asylum seekers just are not. Um, and uh, I mean, I think that affects bilateral cooperation. Bilateral cooperation outside of uh, a multilateral forum has been going on between Australia and Indonesia for years. Uh, it hasn't been achieving the policy outcomes that Australia wants, I think, because there's such a mismatch of priorities uh, in the importance that's put on the issue in Australia and Indonesia. It's not a law enforcement priority for Indonesia. It's not a political priority. Uh, so uh, I think an openness to bilateral cooperation doesn't necessarily address that. Uh, but I think uh, Australians also need to appreciate that if no bilateral cooperation was happening at all, I think we'd, we'd have a much more difficult problem to deal with.